another edition of Golden Eagle Sports Report. Tonight, we'll be discussing the number 16 ranked women's volleyball team, as well as men's and women's basketball. Golden Eagle Sports Report starts right now. Good evening, Marquette. I'm John Steppe. And I'm Tara Schumel. Over the weekend, the number 16th Marquette women's volleyball team swept the Red Storm in straight sets. This is the 20th sweep of the season for the squad. Our very own Chris Reisner was on hand to recap the action. The Marquette women's volleyball team made quick work of St. John's Saturday, taking them down in straight sets. I think we were a little slow in transition to get things going, but then once we got into the flow of the match, I thought our serve pass did a good job. And there was a little bit added motivation to the game, as it was senior day. Just having a lot of people here, um, the whole lower bowl was filled at one point. That was really awesome. So just getting um, everybody was really And this isn't really the last time Marquette will so play the Red Storm. With the field set for the Big East tournament, two-seeded Marquette will play three-seed St. John's next Friday in Omaha at 2 p.m. For St. John's on Friday again, we plan to just come out, make a little bit less errors offensively, and just to go out and be ready for that game to beat them and then hopefully uh, advance into the finals. Uh, well, we'll look at what's going on with St. John's. They're, they're a good team. Uh, you know, they have some things that they can do offensively that can cause problems. They can block balls. Uh, the libero is really good. So we're going to have to find a way to game plan against them a little bit better because our offense was sputtering tonight. Awesome. Reporting from the Al McGuire Center, Chris Reisner, Marquette Wire Sports. With some insight on women's volleyball, we now want to welcome in our one of our volleyball analysts, Zoe Comerford. Zoe, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, John. Well, let's get right into it. Zoe, it was senior night, and they ended the regular season on a high note with their 20th shutout, or excuse me, their 20th sweep of the year. What does this accomplishment say about the team's success? So it actually says a lot. So Tice and Abby Julian kind of talked a little bit about how important it was to get that win at the Al, because it probably will be their last home match of the season unless they host the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. But um, they definitely said how it was important that everyone was really playing on their game. And maybe they were a little rattled in that first set, but they kind of picked it up in the second and third set. Even in the third set, they hit a .556, which is a pretty impressive as a collective team. And the team had combined 365 in that last clip and had just two errors in the final frame. So with a team hitting as efficiently as Marquette does, how does that give them a leg up against the competition? I mean, obviously, when you have big hitters like Ali Barber, Jenna Rosenthal, Anna Hawk, Hope Wirch, and they're all hitting above maybe a .500, that's pretty impressive just as an individual. And then when you combine that with the, the team, they don't make that many mistakes. And I think if they keep that up, they definitely will go far in the postseason. And obviously, they're going to try to get to that Creighton game in the Big East tournament. So that'll play a big part into how they, they do in the tournament as well. And senior Abby Julian got her first start for the squad on Saturday and even ended up being on the court to finish the game. What did that mean to her? Yeah, when we were talking to her, she was very excited because Ryan had told her maybe a week before that she was playing in the game. She didn't realize she would get to end the game, but she did get to start the game. And she was able to get some sets, which she said she wasn't able to do for her four years. So being able to make a difference with the team, with the experienced team of Marquette Volleyball, she just really loved it and she had a great time. So she was very excited about that. And finally, Zoe Marquette's going to get another chance against St. John's shortly at the Big East Tournament. What will be the keys to that matchup? Yeah, it's really unique, actually, because they played St. John's on Saturday, and they're playing them again in little, a little less than a week. So that's a quick turnaround. And losing the first set, or almost losing the first set to St. John's definitely rattled them a little bit um, in the first set, but they definitely got back on, got back on the horse, as to say, and did very well in the next two sets and won pretty handedly. So I think they really need to stay confident with their serving as the most part and because they didn't have that many service aces. And they're a team who is known for service aces. And Hope Wirt had two service aces, but usually she'll get maybe like maybe like four or five. So they definitely have to stay confident on that. And obviously their defense has been a bit of a struggle this season, so they really need to cover that back line a little bit better. And I think if they get hot, they are a team that's going to win the Big East Tournament. Bold statement right there. We're going to take a short break, but when we'll come back, we'll be talking some Marquette men's and women's basketball. Don't go anywhere because Golden Eagle Sports Support will be right back.
Welcome back to Golden Eagles Sports Report. Once again, I'm John Steppe. Yeah, you are, and I'm Tara Schumel. Marquette women's basketball is off to a 3-1 start in its 2018-19 campaign. The team defeated its first three opponents by almost 43 points on average before suffering its first loss to number 24 Miami on Thursday in the semifinal of the preseason NIT. To give us more information on what happened in that game, we want to welcome in one of our women's basketball analysts, Nick Galley. Nick, good to see you. Looking spiffy today. Thank you, John. I broke out the polo today, went with the expensive stuff. It's our last episode before Thanksgiving, so I figured I might as well. So let's do it. Any Thanksgiving plans? Um, I, you know, just hanging out on campus. Probably going to have a nice Thanksgiving dinner at Burger King or something. Uh, that's, I, th I think that's how we're going to go this year. I think that's how we're going to go. So. Okay, well, yeah. until you get those 10 yeah. chicken fries or 129 <laughs> or whatever, some more important things to talk about. The women's team faced its toughest test so far this season, playing the number 24 Miami Hurricanes down in Coral Gables. Mm -hmm. So how was the or how was Miami able to take down the Golden Eagles? Well, let me start by saying Beatrice Montpierre of Miami was unbelievable. 24 points, 21 rebounds. Marquette could not stop her. Shooting was rough for both teams. But Miami outshot Marquette in all three categories. By those categories, I mean field goal percentage, three-point percentage, and free throw percentage. Miami outshot them on all those. So that really ended the game for Marquette right there. You can't win when you shoot like that. And to make matters worse, the Hurricanes held Alizia blocked in the reigning Big East Player of the Year down to just seven points. Mm -hmm. What did they do to stop her? Well, I think it was a real simple defensive uh, scheme from Miami. I think they were just closing out on the three-point shot, stacking the paint, not letting her get any easy shots, contesting everything. And I think another thing is that Marquette traveled or Marquette trailed by 15 points with or 16 points rather with just five minutes left in the third quarter. So they were they were behind in the second half. That's not something you want to do, especially in double digits. So I think she might have been forcing some shots, trying to take some opportunities that weren't there, and that could have led to that low field goal percentage and only seven points. And her and the four other starting seniors are all averaging double figures in points this season. Mm -hmm. But Nick, I want to know which player outside of those five do you think has stood out the most? Uh, for me, I think the X factor would be Isabel Spingola. Uh, she's a junior, and she had a very good first two games, looked like she was going to be really consistent. Um, she averaged 10 points between the first three games, which were all wins. She only had two in that Miami game, but got to keep in mind that everyone on that Marquette team looked pretty rough in that Miami game. They weren't really themselves. When so, it hits one, it hits them all. Exactly, yeah. It was just a domino effect, so you can't really judge her off that game, but uh, I think she had some really good consistency, especially through the first two games, shot 60% from the field, so I think we could see her later on in the season. And some nice three-point shooting, too. Yeah, for sure. She's very reliable from beyond the arc. Good to see, um, especially heading into some tough games against Mississippi State, uh, Michigan, and Northwestern. So. Well, Marquette continues its season Saturday against University of Illinois Chicago. What mm -hmm. do you expect to see from Marquette in this matchup? Well, a couple things. I think one thing is the mental game. They need to shake off this game against Miami, move on to the next game, get ready for this one, make sure your head's focused completely on this game. Don't even worry about that Miami game. Just forget about it. Second thing, I think you got to get Alizé blocked in going early and often. Make sure she's getting her shots up. She is a great scorer, very proficient. So I think you just have to get her in her zone. And once you can do that and she's scoring normally, you're going to see a win from Marquette against Chicago. Well, as always, thank you, Nick. Thank you for having me. We will take a quick break. But when we're back, we're going to be talking about the other basketball team here at Marquette. And you won't want to miss what Coach Wojo and some of the players told reporters earlier today. So don't go anywhere because we'll be right back with more Golden Eagle Sports Report.
Now let's just stuck together. Hello again and welcome back to Golden Eagles Sports Report. Moving over to men's basketball, the Golden Eagles had a very lopsided week. To start off, Marquette traveled south to Bloomington for a battle with the Indiana Hoosiers. The squad had plenty of confidence after ending the AP poll for the first time in almost five years. That confidence changed quickly at Assembly Hall. The Hoosiers dominated the game for all 40 minutes of play. The final score in that one was 96-73. to Yikes. Yikes. All right. Whew. On a brighter note, Marquette came home to Milwaukee for their Saturday matchup against the Presbyterian Blue Hose. Our own Jack Phillips has the recap from Fiserv Forum. Fiserv Forum may have looked electric pregame, however, it was the exact opposite for most of the game. Brick after brick after brick. That was the story of the first half for the Marquette Golden Eagles, who were shooting 25% from the field heading into halftime. But just because the story starts off poorly doesn't mean there can't be a happy ending, right? It was a great win for our team. Um, you know, there was enormous game pressure. We were down five, down six in the second half, and I felt like, you know, that at that point, Presbyterian really thought, you know, they, they could win the game. And um, there was a lot of game pressure on our guys, and our guys responded. The Golden Eagles entered the second half as if they were a completely different team. Normally one would assume someone like Marcus Howard or Sam Hauser ignited the team's impressive play, but it was actually grad transfer guard Joseph Chartouni. He totaled 16 points off of the bench on 24 minutes and even chipped in three separate three-pointers. To no one's surprise, all of those coming in the second half. Like I said, uh, when you see the ball go in for the first time, it just feels good. And I've Kept working on my, my, my jump shot, kept, kept shooting threes in practice, after practice, and I knew it was going to come, and just got to stay with it. It's not because I, I had one good game that I just got to rely now on it. Just myself having a good game, just going to stay with it, keep working hard, and things are going to be good. Regardless of the squad's early struggles, it should be safe to say that Marquette has left their haunting nightmare of a match against Indiana back in Bloomington. However, their non-conference schedule doesn't get any easier as they now prepare to face the number two team in the nation, the Kansas Jayhawks. Although that game will be played away from both teams' home courts in Brooklyn, New York, Coach Wojo understands how important of a game this will be for his team. It's a tradition-rich program. Uh, they have a Hall of Fame coach and they have much talent uh, as anyone in the United States. And so it'll be a tremendous challenge for us uh, on a big stage and, and we welcome that and uh, we'll, you know, we're looking forward to it, and we'll grow from it. Alongside Megan Rock from Fiserv Forum, I'm Jack Phillips, Market Wire Sports. Now that the squad prepares to face Kansas on Wednesday, let's see what Coach Wojciechowski had to say on his one-on-one -on -one team's biggest game of the season. Well, we have an unbelievable amount of respect for, for Kansas and their program and, and Coach Self, and obviously I think they're as talented as any college basketball team in the country this year. Uh, it's a huge challenge, but one we welcome. You know, our team needs to be challenged. That's how we figure out where we're at. And uh, our non-conference challenges us con consistently. And I'm not sure they'll be any bigger than the one in, uh, against Kansas. Despite the seriousness of their upcoming game, players and coaches couldn't help but smile at the thought of Thanksgiving just a few days away. As the team will be spending the holiday with one another, let's see what Marcus Howard is most excited for this Thursday. I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure what uh, uh, our people are putting together, but I know they're going to put together a great meal. But my, my personal favorite is pumpkin pie. I think my mom makes a mean pumpkin pie. So that's like, that's my go-to every time. I could eat that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but it's probably not the best thing right now to say. But uh... We now want to welcome in one of our men's basketball analysts, Shane Hogan. Thanks for being here, Shane. Great to be back. Well, Shane, Marquette seemed like they were so deserving of such a high recognition from the rest of the team and the nation, basically, against the game against Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. um, however, after what you saw Wednesday night, do you still believe the Golden Eagles are deserving of such an AP Top 25 ranking? Not right now, Tara, and here's why. They went in Wednesday night against Indiana Assembly Hall. They were intimidated. That place was sold out, rocking crowd, and they were intimidated by a great crowd and it got to them personally. And you could tell that they were just were not mentally ready. And that's a little concerning. They did not play defense well. They didn't shoot well. We'll get into a little bit more of that later. But they have chances to regain that ranking. So it's not done yet. They've got a whole season ahead of them and some really big opportunities coming up. And looking at that game, what specifically did they not do well? 
It's their defense yet again that let them down. It's been the story the last few years here. 94 points they gave up to a team that they should have handled pretty easily and a very inexperienced team as well. And then their three-point shooting. Five of 23 they shot from three wow. on Wednesday night. That's something that they take pride in. It's their strength, and they just did not hit their shots. It's unusual to see. And in order to move forward and have success, they're going to have to take care of that. Now the Golden Eagles reared the bounce back on Saturday afternoon against Presbyterian. However, they may have struggled early on, but Joseph Chartouni was able to come in clutch there. Yep. Do you think he's – What are, first off, what are your thoughts on the grad transfer? Well, he's exactly – this game proved exactly what Marquette wanted when he signed as a grad transfer coming over from Fordham. He's a defensive player first, a pass-first point guard, and he came off the bench, added a great, great spark to a lineup that finished out the game that I think Coach Wojo is going to like moving forward. And it's exactly what they needed. It was a back and forth, ugly first half, low scoring. They came out in the second half, firing on all cylinders, and he was leading the charge in that. Definitely his best performance as a Golden Eagle. You were on call for that game, correct? Absolutely. So then you probably saw Marquette's tweet. I did. They were saying how they were a fan account, yeah. basically, for him. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, first off, that's nice. I mean, they want to make this guy feel welcome. He's coming over to a new school, but it's, it's, they're right. They, everyone should be a fan of him right now. He's going to be a huge piece for this Marquette team moving forward. If they want to have success, they're going to need him to really pick up kind of where he left off from this Presbyterian game on Saturday. And I think you're going to see his confidence rise because he had his best performance of the year so far. Are we getting too excited, though? No, I don't think so. I mean, right now they need some reasons to get excited. It's been a weird season so far. You're beating teams that you should. That Indiana loss on, on last Wednesday um, kind of hurt their vibes. And why not get excited for something good that's happening? You've got a lot more to get excited about moving forward as well. And Shane, looking ahead, Marquette now plays in Brooklyn against number two team in the entire country, yep. Kansas Jayhawks. What does Marquette need to do against Kansas? Well, it's going to be a tough test. They're the number two reason. They're their number two team for a reason. They've got talent up and down that lineup. They've got a Hall of Fame coach and coach self. It's going to be a tough test, especially in Brooklyn too, away from their home court. But in order to go out and get the win, they've got to shoot the ball better. That's their strength. That's what's gotten them to this point. Marcus has got to be better with the ball. He's had some issues with the turnovers in, to start the season so far new responsibilities as the lead point guard. And I think as he gets more comfortable with that, you'll see the turnover number go down. Got to take care of the ball against Kansas because they'll make it pay. And lastly, they've got to play better defense. More effort. They're going to score on you, but can you limit it? And what can the effort do from these guys? Got to have a little faith against the number two team in the country. Well, that's going to do it for us here on Golden Eagle Sports Support. Hold up. I got to take a second. I feel like we have something really important and we're just missing it. What could that be? I don't, I don't know. Do you want to tell me like what? Do we have a birthday coming up? My what? Wait, when was your birthday? A couple months ago. A couple months ago? When's your birthday? November 20th. What's tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow's the 20th. What? Your birthday's tomorrow? Yes. Well, it just so happens that on this show, we would like to wish you a very happy birthday. So before we do that, I'd like to play a little clip that we put together for our very own John Steffi because he spent so much time with us and he's devoted so much and we love him for it. So, here it is. Brunson with the chance to tie or take the lead, but no, they cannot get the tip in. Sam Hauser gets the rebound and Marquette has defeated the number one team in the country for the first time in program history among regular season games and second time at all. Good evening and welcome back to a special Thursday night edition of Golden Eagle Sports Support Final Four Week. Give and go starts right now. So Golden Eagle Sports Support starts right now. Money Mayweather, right? Exactly. Money, money, and money. Multiple Golden Eagles swooping in for that one. More on now. Actually, we have a few more seconds here. So now we'll turn it to Kellen and Ryan for more analysis. Athletic competition other than yeah. throwing a football. Could Tom Brady beat that's Michael Jordan? No, no, that's fine. No, 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 no. no. First 13 minutes so far today, the streak is up to 400 scoreless minutes. He Wilborn, Wilborn with a spin move, beautiful to boop. That was a piece of art right there. At Marquette University, good night. For Kellen Bowdy and John Steffi, good night, Marquette. 
So John, from everyone on the Market Wire, uh, we just want to say thank you for devoting most, if not all, of your time to this team and sports coverage, and we appreciate you greatly. So happy birthday. Thank you. And nice try trying to get out of it, because you weren't <laughs> going to get out of it. So I thought I had it. You thought, I thought I did. Nope, nope, definitely not. Not on this team. Well, you want to finish off the show for us? Well, on behalf of everyone, thank you for tuning in, and good night, Marquette.